Welcome to the Curate Your Life podcast with Demetria, where we focus on curating the life you've been dreaming of, one goal at a time. Hi, y'all. This is going to be a little bit different format for the podcast today. I just want to do a check-in and talk about some things that are coming up because we are halfway through this year. Can you believe it? It's July. We have six months left to go in the year. Six months have passed. And if you're like me, I've been doing a little bit of an assessment of my year and making plans about the rest of the year, making plans for the rest of the year. So I've been doing a lot of journaling and thinking about this first half of the year, what I accomplished, what I have left to accomplish, how I felt in the first half of the year, how and how I want to go forward, what I want the rest of 2024 to be, what I want to do, how I want to feel going into the second half of the year, what I want to do in my business, just all of it. Like I've spent a lot of time journaling and thinking and planning. I've used my planner and I've used just like kind of random pieces of paper. I've done some digital journal journaling, right? Just kind of when things come to me, I, I've been spending time with my thoughts, with my brain. So I've done a lot of assessing and part of it was I wanted to be further along on some things. And so I had some time where the thoughts were, oh, you know, this past six months, I wanted to do so much more. I wanted to be further along. I, you know, I just wanted things to look different and the six months are gone, right? So all I can really do, the best thing to do is to take those lessons, try and figure out why I'm not where I wanted to be, what I need to do differently going into the rest of the year. It's not productive. It's not useful really to spend a whole lot of time in the past. Yes, to assess and look at the lessons, get the lessons and then move on. But if I would spent more time, any more time on shoulda, woulda, coulda, then I'm not doing, I'm not making things happen. So that's one thing that I want to share with you today. Yes, assess the first half of 2024, what your plans were, how you carry them out, where you are, what you need to do go, going forward, and then move on. We can't spend all of our time looking back in the past and expect to move forward. There is a saying somewhere about... Um, the rearview mirror being smaller than the windshield for a reason because you should you should be focused forward. So thinking about focusing on 2024, the rest of 2024, I spent some time looking at my plans and y'all know, I guess y'all know, y'all should not should know, but hopefully you know that I have this planner. It's a 30, that's not true. It's a 90 day planner. I work with my clients one quarter at a time on one goal at a time, and I do the same thing. So thinking about two quarters left in 2024, I sat down, I thought about what I want to achieve, what I want the rest of 2024 to look like, and then I decided on my goal for this next quarter for July through September. And I wrote that down and did all of my planning. And just got clear on what I want to do going forward. Not so much what shoulda, coulda, woulda done, you know, in the past. It's like, okay, now what? What is my next step? And it's the same thing that I do with my clients. When we sit down and we talk about where they want to go, we look at where they are and what where they want to go. And then we decide the next step. So that's what I've been doing. One of the things that I've created in the past few weeks is a new free offer for anybody who wants it. I'll put a link in the show notes. It's two simple steps to love your life. But they're just really simple things that you can start in the next 10 minutes. And I teach you how that will help you 
get happy with where you are, but also propel you forward. It's like you have to work on your mindset and things right now. Get right with where you are right now and then you can move forward. So that's some of the stuff that I've been doing to myself. Like, okay, where am I right now? And, you know, coming to terms with that and being okay with where I am right now and then ready to move forward. So I've done that. I have workshops coming up. I'm going to do a monthly workshop. And I'm probably renaming it, so I'm not going to give you the name, but look for that. I'll be putting out information on monthly workshops that I'm going to be doing. And I think it's probably going to be the same workshop just to introduce people to my work. So I will have one regular workshop and then I will probably do, I will be doing special workshops on different topics and things like that. So one thing, if you have ideas, if there's something that you want help with, if you want me to talk about, I would love to hear it. Send me an email at info at coach .com, or you can come over to Instagram and you can leave me a, a message, direct, direct message me on Instagram. But I'd love to hear what you are interested in, what you're working on, what you want help with. And I'll see if I can work that into the next few webinars that, that I have coming up. The special ones, the one, the regular webinar will have a set topic that I'll do, like I said, to introduce people to my work. And then I'll do special webinars. So that's one thing. The other thing is I have been working to put some structure around the Curate Your Life program. I had an idea of what it was, but I've been in a program myself. I get coaching as well. I need somebody to help me clear out, organize, and you know that kind of thing. My brain, just the way I offer for my clients, but I've been putting more structure around the Curate Your Life program, and that's coming along really well. Actually, it's done, and I have some people that are going through it right now, current clients that are going through it, so I'm very happy with that. So one of my things was like, there is planning, and there is goal setting, and then there's action. And so in my life, in my business right now, it's just the action. I'm taking the actions. I'm assessing how they're working and then I'm continuing or re rerouting as GPS would say, continuing or changing things that need to be changed. But that's where I am. And I think that's a natural place to be at this time of year. If you're looking at goals and assessing things, it's the halfway mark, right? So you look to see what you've done, the ground that you've covered, and you celebrate that. And then you decide how you're going to cover the rest of the ground. There is a great book. It's called The Gap and the Gain. And I cannot think of Gay Hendricks. I'm pretty sure The Gap and the Gain. It's a really good book. And it talks about when you set a goal, a lot of people look at the gap, like how far they have to go to get there. They don't spend any time looking at the progress they've made. So I have a little commercial break in this recording to tell you that the gap in the gain was written by Dan Sullivan and Benjamin Hardy. And the big leap is Gay Hendricks. Both fantastic books, but I wanted to properly credit the gap and the gain. So that is one important thing. Like when I was assessing this year, that was one of the things that I did. I sat down and I wrote out the things that I have accomplished because we are so quick to beat ourselves up and like, I still have to do this. I need to do this. I should have done this. But when you sit down and look at your accomplishments and take a little time to celebrate them, it shows your brain that, yes, look what we did. This is what we created, what we made, what we're capable of. And then it gives you that boost, that just that little door opening of seeing what is possible, what else you can do. So that's where I am. I'm also, I'm going to share working on 
a couple of, I have the planner and I'm making some minor updates to the planner, just tweaking it a little bit. So that's one thing that I'm doing. And I am going to be offering two more journals, just pure journals for thoughts and things like that. So I'm working on those. I'll tell you more about those and where you can get them when they're completed. We're in the works, but I'm excited about that too. I think journaling and getting just getting space to think is huge, but journaling and writing it down is even bigger, right? It's, it does something, there's the science behind it. It reduces stress, it helps with memory, it gives you some space between what's going on in here and what's really happening. Like you, the thoughts that we have, y'all are, are the story. They're just what, they're the story that we're crafting. And if you have three people in a room or 10 people in a room and things are going on, and then you take those people separately and you interview them, you're gonna get that many different stories. If you have three people, you're gonna get three different stories, three different versions. If you have 10 people, you're gonna get 10 different stories because we all see and perceive and process things differently. And that's one of the things that I help clients with. I help them get out of their head or get clear on what's going on on in their head, I help them see, here's what has actually happened. Here's how you're thinking about what happened and then how that affects everything. So that's what journaling does. When you write it all down, that gives you some space to see, okay, it was a firestorm in my head, but when I write it down and I look at it, I can see I have a little space just to see like, ooh, maybe that wasn't as big a deal as I thought. Maybe I can tackle this problem one thing at a time, but it just gives you that space to look at it a little bit objectively because it's not in here. It's on a piece of paper, even though it's a, your piece of paper and it's your thoughts on the piece of paper when you can see them, it gives you just enough space and time and distance to look at it differently, to consider it differently. So I so much believe in the power of journaling. So I'm producing two journals, just space for you to write and get the thoughts out. And I'm really excited about those. So those are some of the things that I have going on. I would encourage you just to take some time if you haven't already, it's not too late. It's July 2nd. It doesn't matter if it's July 10th, 15th, or if it's August when you hear this and you still have five months left in the year, take some time, assess where you've been, what you've accomplished. Think about where you want to go and what your next steps are to get there. If you would like help with that, as always, I'm here. I would love to have a consultation with you. The Curate Your Life consultation is complimentary. And we just sit down and we do the work together. And then we can discuss a plan on how to get there and if it's feasible to work with me, if it's something that you want to do and how coaching can help you get to the place that you want to be. So I hope that you're having a great summer. If you're in Texas or any part of the South where it is hot, I hope you're keeping cool. I walked out of my apartment the other day and it was late afternoon and the heat was surprising. It was a, a wake up call. It just seemed to envelop me. And I'm a Texas girl. I'm used to this, but I had been in my nice cool apartment which is probably really hot for some people. I like to keep my AC on 76 during the day, but when it's 102 outside, 76 feels really cool. So I walked out into that and it was eye-opening. 
So I hope wherever you are, you're keeping cool if it's hot and if it's a nice 80 degrees where you are, I hope you appreciate that and no humidity. Um, but wherever you are, I hope things are great for you. I hope your summer is going well. And I hope that the rest of 2024 is everything that you want it to be. And if, again, if you need me, I'm here for you. I will put links for my two simple steps to love your life in the show notes. And the link for the Curate Your Life consultation is always there. And I'm always here for you. Until next time.